Good evening, everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. It's been a long weekend, and the grind's actually continuing on my end because there's actually more severe weather in the forecast here. We have storms expected on Tuesday and Wednesday. We talked about it a little bit on the stream Sunday, but we're actually going to go ahead and do a little bit of a forecast analysis for that and for Wednesday. We'll also take a look at the pattern ahead here because it's actually looking pretty active even as we head into May. So brace yourselves. More or less, just make sure that you're subscribed and you're hitting that like button. Also make sure you're hitting that, getting that notification bell on so that way you can stay notified. There will be more live streams to come and there also will be more forecast videos to come along with our outlooks for hurricane season and the months and seasons ahead. So. Hopefully you guys are enjoying that content and we're just going to go ahead and just dive straight into things here really. So for tomorrow's threat, this is mainly a damaging wind and hail threat over here. This is going to be over towards the Midwest and the Northern Plains. So the areas of interest are going to be more so towards far southwestern Minnesota. We have Western Iowa, unfortunately, as well as Eastern Nebraska. This area was hit very hard on Friday by tornadoes and we're under the gun once again for severe weather. Again, damaging wind and hail are the main threats. However, there is a pretty big 5% area for tornadoes. Maybe a small chance for the southern mode to maybe get upgraded to a 10%. We'll have to see how some of the convective models trend through the overnight here to see if this ends up occurring. There is even a chance that we may have to check out what happens in the afternoon. But that being said here, pretty long stretch of severe weather starting back up once again because the threat even persists into tomorrow. And we'll see an interesting setup with this as we go into the actual map analysis here with the uh, upper air maps in particular with this. It's going to be associated with the same storm system, but with this trough doing a little bit of a glancing blow, it's going to stir up some what's called short waves. And these short waves are going to allow for new storms to fire in the southern sector here towards Kansas and Oklahoma. And with the wind profiles here and the, the uh, thermodynamics, the dew points, the instability, the surface temperatures, etc. Definitely has that look for a dangerous, severe setup towards the late afternoon and evening hours. Could even sustain itself into the overnight over here. I do think that this has the greater chance of the two slight risk areas currently to go to enhanced risk. I'm thinking the corridor will be somewhere between areas south of Woodward all the way up to Wichita, Kansas here. So definitely need to be on the lookout if you're in central Kansas, south central Kansas, and west central Oklahoma once again. Can't this include maybe the slight risk being pushed further to the south towards maybe Midland, Texas. I do think the threat with that is more so going to be hail than tornadoes, but nonetheless, still need to be on the watch for that. And then, as we also mentioned at the start of the video, days four through eight, this is kind of just symbolic of what the weather pattern is like. Potential too low is the labeling for all of these days. Basically, that's saying that while not every weather model is showing it currently enough to the point where we could have a focused area of severe weather that has a 15% threat in advance, which is kind of alarming if, if, you, if we're being honest here. But if we, we, we don't, it's not like we don't have the potential, I guess you could say. But in this case, this is pretty much symbolic of the weather pattern that we have ahead here. So speaking of the weather pattern here, we are looking at those upper level maps and we have two maps that we're looking at here. The GFS is one that's taking the widescreen here. We do have the Euro on the bottom end here in the bottom left corner. So the thing that we're going to be making note of here, and we're going to basically just start out by looking at tomorrow and Wednesday setup. And this is the trough here that's going to be the catalyst behind that severe weather. And what you'll see here is we do have a little bit of that ski jump look which is what you would look for with the severe weather setup especially in regards to maybe some tornadoes it's not a sharp ski jump but usually this the uh, sharper this pushes off to the north usually you have a better chance of those low level winds kind of 
corresponding well with these upper level ones that we're looking at now. So this definitely already has one look towards a linear event. And then also you can see the uh, diffluence here. Basically, we're looking at the spreading of air whenever you see gaps like this. Usually in a, an environment like this that's favorable for thunderstorms, this is usually almost confirmation in a way. And we'll see this later once we get into the precipitation or the simulated radar here. But you can know, already see this looks pretty linear. In case you can't see what I'm talking about, here is the mark to go along with it. Right up in this region here is going to be where that line of storms is. Pushes a little further up to the north as well, but the I think some of the most intense weather really is going to be out towards this region right now. Forgive me, I'm not the greatest artist here, but that's just what I'm that's just kind of what I'm thinking at the current point in time. But in any case here, we'll keep the ball rolling here and watch what happens with this trough as we continue to go forward here. So this is heading into Wednesday morning as that leaves. And this is our storm system as a whole over here. That's right on the U.S. Canadian border. We see this elongated cyclone or elongated area of low pressure begin to deepen just a little bit towards this rear flank here. And what this is going to effectively end up doing is creating a series of short waves over here towards Kansas and Oklahoma. And this is how our severe weather setup for the following day gets going. These short waves are going to be a key component to that setup. Because if you look at the trough here, it's kind of more or less a glancing blow. We're more adjacent to the trough than not than uh, right up against it. If the trough were to dig further to the south here, I would be even more concerned about a severe weather threat here. But the key things to make note of here, and we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at that mid-level of the atmosphere where we can see the short wave. The short waves are actually really impressive over here. Basically, to anyone that's a little bit more new to the channel, when we talk about short waves, we're looking at these isobars or contours right here. The technical term is called isobars, but contours are sometimes easier. I don't discriminate here, but fact in the matter is, though, Whenever you see these little ripples within these lines, especially within an area that you know is expecting severe weather, that is a signal that increases confidence in severe weather. It's not always a guarantee, but when you see stuff like this and sometimes seeing potential isotherms trying to develop over here, that is a very reassuring signal for severe weather and it only becomes more prominent as we get later into the evening so i do think we could see multiple convective modes of storms for wednesday so could be another big day possibly like i said not a shoe in but definitely seeing some signals that could lead to some big big time storms for sure here and we can even transition to the low level jet and kind of get an idea of what to expect later down the line here especially as this is still loading so this is tomorrow as, as i said before not really going to be that kind of day where we're looking at a tornado a, a heightened tornado threat like i said i really think it's going to be more or less right on the line or south of the nebraska line more so towards kansas where we get things going and even then that low level jet just isn't that strong we're really going to be looking for damaging winds towards the upper levels of the, the atmosphere kind of mixing down towards the surface but as we go into wednesday however different story right along where those short waves are look at how these wind barbs are pointing from north to south here just about what you would expect for a more robust severe weather outbreak and potentially even a tornado outbreak at this point so definitely need to be watchful over towards the Kansas Oklahoma line in particular West Oklahoma especially as well. So this is how we're going to move in regards to our kinematic setup here. I'm thinking like I said before, right along that Kansas Oklahoma line is going to be the hot spot maybe towards West Oklahoma could be another one. But as a whole here, if we go back and reverse here, we're going to go back to looking at the euro here in the bottom left corner. And I want you to just kind of take a look at what to expect as we go along here. So current storm system that's responsible for severe weather. 
and look at the troughs that we have rolling in behind them after this point just one after the other over the course of the next 16 days so very active weather pattern ahead here make sure you're staying weather aware whether you're in the plain states or even a little further off to the east here because eventually these do move off towards areas like the ohio valley over towards the midwest maybe even the southeast as well and maybe even a couple of systems could affect the gulf coast states to go along with that so again best way to stay weather aware make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new around here also make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified of the forecast videos that we do here and also the outlook videos to go along with that and of course live streams but <clears throat> kinematically speaking if we're looking at all of these storm systems some ones that catch my eye in particular would be this system that will be around the 7th maybe a couple around the 10th and even maybe one on the 13th i have to of course the i have to keep an eye on these and watch for trends more or less this is one model that we're looking at out of or two models in this case out of many so let's go ahead and pause this and move over to some thermo stuff which would be the dew points and also the surface temperatures so main point that we're going to make with the surface temperatures in particular with this is going to be over the next couple of days in particular i mean it's not really to anyone's surprise how the gulf of mexico is moving right now the gulf of mexico has been pretty much uninhibited over the last week or so and that's pretty much going to continue to be the case here these storm systems don't have any adjacent high pressures around them that would suppress the gulf or keep that moisture flowing offshore so we're just going to continue to get abundant moisture pushed onshore and you can see it on the models pretty clearly this is tomorrow you can see those 60 degree dew points making up over towards omaha and through a large part of eastern kansas here we have mid 60 dew points and beyond at that point so not really surprising and then as we continue to go forward beyond that point you can continue to see that and also keep in mind look at how the look at how the surface temps are kind of corresponding with this as well if i just put this into a straight up loop here and just let it go along with our surface temps you can see how as those temps are rising we're getting those dew points to go along with that towards the eastern half of the country out towards the west it's pretty dry out here but anywhere east of the rockies right now especially towards the southern states it's going to be some uh really ripe air really humid moist air in this case I'm trying to find a way to not make that into an innuendo but in any case the moisture is definitely going to be there in the days and weeks ahead here so some quick parameters that we're going to look at before we look at simulated radar for the next couple of days here is going to be our instability in particular so we looked at our low level jet a little earlier so like i said before kinematically we have a decent setup especially over towards kansas nebraska on tuesday and then kansas oklahoma on wednesday the instability is also very eye-catching as well as we get into the days ahead here so this is just right around lunchtime here over towards again that kansas nebraska line we have 2,000 joules per kilogram of cape exactly what you would need for severe weather and maybe even a bit more beyond that we have some excess that could go along with that and we can continue to see that build as we head into the evening hours for tomorrow so plenty of energy available for these thunderstorms and we have even more energy on wednesday here where we're getting to a very abundant area of 3,000, even 4,000 joules a kilogram for, for cape as we head into the early afternoon that day so like i said very very impressive environment for severe storms i do think again wednesday will probably be the bigger day out of the two but we'll just have to kind of wait and see. That's always more of a now cast situation, if you ask me. Last but not least, we'll finally go ahead and take a look at that simulated radar. And some things that we will make note of, of course. 
are going to be actually some snow over here to the Rockies as well, along with our severe storms. This is our setup for Tuesday again, looking mostly like a linear event. Could last a little bit into the late evening hours, but I don't expect this to be a long duration event. And then, of course, here is Oklahoma on Wednesday, as well as Kansas. Multiple storms possible. Severe weather looks likely at this point, I would say. And then as that storm system clears out, we do see another one that could have increased focus more so again over towards the western high plains. So Nebraska and maybe even South Dakota could be in the action here. Could be a setup over here towards Texas, mainly thinking this will be a big hailer as we head into Friday night. So we go beyond that point. We get our next storm system here. Do you see a decent amount of wintry precip here towards the Rockies? Once again, like I mentioned before, and then right out ahead of that is where we could see more severe weather on the 6th and maybe even towards the 7th towards potentially Chicago. Does look like this is an evening overnight event. Does not necessarily have the look of anything severe at the moment, but heavy showers and thunderstorms do look possible at this time over towards the region. So we continue to go on from that point. So we go from the 8th into the 9th. Things do quiet down briefly until we get over to the Ozarks around the 10th. And we see another big storm system looking pretty linear at this point. So could see some big time showers and storms over towards Tennessee and Mississippi. Maybe even pushing off to the east here on the 10th. That moves over towards mid-Atlantic. And then after that point, we have yet another storm system to follow right behind that around the 13th. And then we do look like we finally start to quiet down as we get towards mid month. So like I said, a lot, and I mean a lot to keep track of in the days ahead here. Not necessarily surprising to say that because May is statistically the most active month for severe weather. But in that case though, definitely a good time to stay weather aware make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you get that notification bell on to be updated on new videos and live streams and more but that being said appreciate the support that i've gotten from this weekend stream of course as well and we will be probably doing many more from that point till then though guys have a good night i'll likely see you in the morning till then it's been tired metalhead weatherman take care